TIFU an online review of a bar and grill leads to being denied service. I live in a small town where everybody knows everybody, and one of the few restaurants in this town changed ownership, no big deal right? Well, as one would expect, many things about this restaurant changed with new management. There's a new food supplier meaning a change in food quality, there's a new rearrangement of tables and chairs, and unfortunately a noticeable drop in how quick service is. Like I would be seated at 11.30 a.m., just ahead of the lunch rush, and I wouldn't get my food until 12.30 p.m. I know they have the wait staff, but for whatever reason, they want one waitress doing all the tables. I got it in my mind that I ought to leave a review that got me in hot water with the new owner. If you would have asked me before, old owner, sold the restaurant's name, I would have told you that it would be a 10 out of 10 experience 100% of the time. Unfortunately with, new owner, there's been a lot of changes, both good and bad. Unfortunately the only waitress doing all the tables means she falls behind with getting food and drinks to everyone in a timely manner. An old owner, used to have up to four waitresses working at a time, and at the time of writing this, all of them are still employed. If one couldn't make it, old owner, would help the waitstaff. I have not once seen, new owner, get off his ass in the back room to help with an overwhelmed waitress. This is just from my observation alone during the lunch rush. The weekends bring almost triple the foot traffic, and there's still only one waitress working. I've heard people saying it took up to two hours before they were served their food. The solution is simply, going back to the old model the, old owner, had, which is having more than one waitress working at a time, so nobody is being overwhelmed. In my opinion, new owner, needs to get off his ass, and be a leader, and not a boss. Until, new owner, decides to put more waitresses on the floor, I'd recommend buying all the beer and food that'll satisfy you, and then close out your tab. Well turns out that their boss watches online reviews like a hawk, and he came across my review, and complained about it to the waitress working that day. Several days pass by, and I decided to go over to the restaurant's bar side for a few beers with friends after we got done hauling away some cows. We all belly up at the bar, get carted by the bartender, and then get our beers. With all the banter going on with my buddies, the new owner managed to walk by at just the right time, and caught wind of my name. Dude straight up asks, are you, my first name? I confirm that to him, and then he asks, last name, right? I confirm to him that both were correct. His next question was pretty much, if you hate the service here so much, why the are you even here in the first place? I ask him what he meant by that, and he pulls out his phone and shows the review I left for the restaurant, I forgot I used my Google account with my name. I also forgot that I even left a review, because I was drunk and laying in bed at that point. He put me on the spot, and repeated the question, I just respond with saying, we're just having a couple beers. The guy responds with, yay, well, I think you should take your business elsewhere. I ask what he meant, and he just says, I didn't stutter. It's messed up that you would spend money at the business you threw shade at, and not considering a consequence. As he points at the door. I ask him if I could finish my beer, the dude says, no, and keeps pointing at the door. I chuckle, nervously, NGL, and say, I can pay my tab, and he basically said, no, I just want you out. Now leave, bye, dot. I leave, and my buddies just went ahead and gunned down their beers. We decided to just meet up at someone's shop, and drink there anyways. Too long did not read. I got refused service for leaving a bad review at my small town bar and grill. Oddly enough, the waitresses there agree with me that they need more waitresses working at a time. The sign of a bad business is pushing away customers instead of taking in their criticisms for improvement. Source. Kitchen Nightmares. Now you have more details to add to your review. Time to update your review I guess. If you hate the service so much why are you here, that's why I'm at the bar and not at a table. You should double down and add the last experience to your review. I'd say get your mates to leave bad reviews to fuck up his business but he's doing an awesome job all by himself. Today I fucked up by eating fast and being mistaken for a convict. So of course this was a month ago but I recently just got out of the US Marine Corps and moved to Australia to live near family while I complete a degree with the GI Bill. Anyway, I was out in town meeting with some potential employers and had been busy all morning and afternoon. So I found myself getting a real late lunch at this small Japanese joint that was pretty busy. Being ex-infantry, old habits tend to die hard. 
Within two minutes of teriyaki chicken and rice being delivered to my table I've completely demolished the entire plate with barely a rice grain left in the bowl. I wolfed it down and I guess I was slightly hunched over it the whole time because I was starving. Some larger, heavily tattooed, biker-type looking gentleman noticed that impressive teriyaki turbo demolition, and also noticed I was built somewhat well and had a tatted up left arm myself. He came up to me and asked immediately, how long have you been out? Now military dudes can easily recognize other military dudes even if they're dressed normal. I was, just a t-shirt and jeans, so I thought that was what he was referring to. I just got out, is more or less what I told him, thinking that's what he meant. Hakea or underscore underscore. I couldn't remember the name of the other West Australian prison he mentioned, but my dumb ass just assumed those were Australian army bases. Nah, Camp Lejeune in the States. I told him. At that point his eyes opened wide and he was telling me that I was hard shit, which is what began to confuse me because as far I was concerned Lejeune was. Nothing special. Just a big multi-purpose base. I was initially like, huh, and he clarified it's because I was, in, in America. He hadn't used the words jail or prison to any extent in the conversation yet, and he even sat down to chat with me. We kinda had some small talk about how the transition is hard and so is readjusting your habits and language to be society friendly, and sure enough he finally asks what I was, in for. Assuming he meant my MOS, I just went, oh, infantry. What so kids? We kind of just looked at each other after that, me confused at the stupidity him in disgust. I clarified that's what they called grunts, and then it finally comes up that he was talking about what I was in jail for, to which I answered I'd never been and we both had a bit of an awkward, oh shit, moment and laughed it off like dumbasses. We both apologized for being stupid and went our separate ways. Too long did not read. Ex-con thought I was also an ex-con because I ate teriyaki chicken a bit quickly. Took both of our dumb asses way too much conversation to figure out I wasn't a con, and he wasn't a vet. Infantry, fucking hell I shouldn't be laughing so hard at that. What so kids, closest you have been to death my friend. Just inhaling dinner like a vacuum cleaner. Just because you speak the same language doesn't mean you speak the same language. I'd watch three seasons of this show. Today I fucked up by having my mum discover my collar. Hi folks, literally happened minutes ago so I'm still deeply traumatized. Essentially, my girlfriend gave me a collar a couple of months ago to wear when we, you know. Anyways, because I am very shy about the whole thing, I've only worn it once or twice. As a result, most of its life is spent in my bedroom, computer desk drawer amongst a sea of pens, paper, and some expired chocolates. Now, I am very forgetful and I entirely forgot that I had the collar just casually sitting in my desk drawer, this is important for later. What I did not expect today, was for my mum to call me on the phone asking for a ruler, saying that she remembers I have a geometry set somewhere from school, and asking me to look for the ruler from that, she needed the ruler for some work-related paper stuff. I let her know that I looked everywhere for the ruler and that I couldn't find it, thought that would be the end of it, but nah. Next thing I know she appears in my room while I'm on a call with my girlfriend, looking around my room for this geometry set, moving my chair back in order to open my desk drawer to rummage around. As she starts rummaging around, I immediately remember something. My collar is sitting inside of my desk, and it's right there. I act quickly and cover it with my hand, acting as if I am holding the drawer open for her, but that doesn't stop her. She moves my hand back, exposing this lovely black leather collar that I was trying my hardest to hide. I go beat fucking red, and just look her in the eyes and shout, that is not what you think it is for. I can explain. She doesn't hesitate to immediately start laughing at me as I am screaming trying to explain what this is for, only to be made worse by the fact that my brother heard the commotion and walked in to try and figure out what was going on. I tried explaining I refuse to explain what it's about in front of my brother, but she insists that I explain, while still laughing. Meanwhile my poor girlfriend is sitting there on the phone wondering what the hell is happening, so I explained to her that my mum found the collar, and I put her on speaker while she and my mum die of laughter. From there, I explain that the inside joke is that my nickname is, Puppy, and as a result a few months ago I was gifted this collar, as a joke, now, I'm sitting here with the last bit of my dignity finally evaporated, as now my mother knows that I am the bottom in my relationship. And hash x 200b. Too long did not read. Mum found collar in my desk, confronted me, and now knows that I am the bottom.
Uh, hope you're ready for getting dog treats from your brother on Christmas. Well, that or a BDSM kit. Dad. How should we punish him? Mom. Hell if I know, but I sure as hell wouldn't spank him. There's nothing wrong with being a bottom. And your mom isn't a baby, believe me, I'm sure she's seen some stuff in her life. My own mother was way more of a freak than I ever was. Take a deep breath, and try not to react to any more jokes. And if you need someone to mail your brother a box of angry hissing cockroaches, hit me up. S. Cheer up. You'll probably get a matching leash for your birthday. I bet your mom wouldn't have thought twice about it but you freaking out and making a scene brought attention to it. Today I fucked up by changing the baby. Obligatory not today. When my wife and I had our first little one, I threw myself into being a dad with open arms. Feeding, bathing, and of course, changing nappies. Nighttime in particular those forward few weeks, making the most of my paternity leave, taking the bulk of night changes and feeds to allow her to recover from childbirth. A few weeks in, I felt confident in my nappy changing abilities. Having gone from a complete novice only a month earlier, I could now change a nappy in under a minute, even blurry eyed in the early hours of the morning. Which brings me to the timing of my foo. It's 4 a.m., the three week old baby has disturbed, and upon performing a sniff test, I determine that there is a full, dirty nappy waiting for my attention. I gather the necessary items a clean nappy, wipes, a nappy sack, and a changing mat all set up on our bed on my side, next to my sleeping wife. Placing my little bundle of joy on the mat, I quickly stripped her off to assess the damage. Here was my first mistake. Thinking it wasn't much, so I could just whip off the old nappy, do a quick wipe and back on with the new. Then on to my second, more fatal error. Using one hand, I gather up the baby's feet and lift her bum slightly off the mat to reach underneath and wipe more effectively. Cue the baby grunting in the manner of a wild boar as what can only be described as a jet-propelled stream of baby poo rockets three female across the bed all over the bedding, the mat, and me. I panic. Grabbing at the packet of baby wipes nearby, I attempt to stem the liquid flow from running off the bed and onto the floor. My panicked efforts disturbed the sleeping wife, who awoke to the sight of her newborn daughter, covered in feces, whilst her husband, also covered in feces attempts to stem a tide of chicken korma-colored baby poo from slipping off the bed. Taking pity, my wife slid the baby over to her side, and, grabbing the baby's legs, attempts to repeat my actions of wiping the child. Before I could utter a word of warning, the baby lets out another feral grunt, follows by yet another explosion of korma-colored poo, all over my wife's side of the bed. A full half an hour of cleaning later, the baby was sound asleep, but we were scarred for life, and down one set of bedding which we couldn't face trying to clean. Too long did not read. Got overconfident changing a nappy in the early hours, and ended up ruining a set of bedding. The good news is that this is a story that you and your wife will delight in telling and retelling your daughter when she is older. My mother liked to tell the story of my brother peeing and hitting himself square in the middle of his forehead. She said he christened himself. My second kid did that, I called it projectile poo. It managed to go in a perfect stream arcing over the crib railing and landing on a throw rug. All I could do was watch in awe, then clean up by hosing down the rug and throwing it in the washer. I was never so glad for a small carpet in my whole life. My daughter did similar, but inside an incubator. While it was contained, it was quite an interesting and difficult clean up. Lol with my first I was changing a diaper and he pooped and some got on the wall. The good part was that most landed on a tree I had painted so it blended right in tears of joy. 